Hey guys, my name is Bando, this is Breakfast of Bando, and today I've decided I'm going to go through all of the Space Marine Codex art. And I just want to give my opinion on the art they've used for the codexes through the editions, how far we've come, and where we are at the moment, and just how I think about it. So, as we know, there's been 10 editions of Warhammer and 140,000 that is and codexes are as ubiquitous to, uh, to Warhammer as Space Marines are however they didn't really exist until almost third edition so what we have here is Warhammer 40,000's Rogue Traders chapter approved book of the Astronomicon so Rogue Trader had a couple of books that really kind of smattered out all of the rules for the different factions um, and the different war gear, that sort of thing, that you could take in Rogue Trader, which, remember, was not a game that we would play of 40k nowadays. Rogue Trader was probably best described as being closer to Dungeons & Dragons than it is to a tabletop war game. So, we have this Book of the Astronomicon. We also had things like the Compilation and the Compendium books. Now, the Compendium book has some of my favourite art. I love this, this, you know, breaching of the Ultramarines, how menacing they look. I love the blue checker design, just the simple blue and white of them. I like that they're kind of a bit plain. They're not too over the top. Um, and it's a really nice piece of artwork. The compilation with its Blood Angels. Again, it's really strange to think we've come from this almost just monotone red space ring to where we've come to now but there's so many things in this image and i apologize because it's hard to find any of these images in like a decent resolution but we can see here we've got things like the golden captain which would lead on to things like uh, dante and tycho we have the death company or this might even actually be dark angels uh, but we've got we've got the black in there as well we've got guys wearing red we've got hazard stripes You've got white in there for apothecaries and captains. There's lots of elements here that we're still seeing today. But then comes along 2nd edition. What we would more traditionally know as something closer to Warhammer. And we get this birth of an era. You know, we have this wonderful battle menu. And again... It's a series of books which just, they're all over the place. Some of them have war gear, some of them have unit rules, some of them have special character rules. So there's no, they're not codexes yet. But we have this wonderful bright red Blood Angels with the really cool blue helmets, which is an aesthetic I love. I absolutely love the look of the beaky marines with the blue helmets and the red bodies. And if I'm going to start a second... Um, Blood Angels Army, which I actually I fully intend to do a second Blood Angels Army at some point. I really want to try and capture that glossy orange bright red that you had in second edition with the blue helmets. So I might do like a uh, what they called a like a, a Blood Angels heavy support detachment, something really you know to to show that they've got those devastator blue helmets on them. We got a wonderful chaplain um, with a brilliant banner. We have a Land Raider in the background. How things have changed with the Land Raider as well. You know, we've come full circle. We've got a Proteus um, Land Speeder, which has come back as well. And it's just this roiling fireball. Love it. I really do. The amazing cover art. And it's the first use of the word Codex, as far as I'm aware, for 40k. And it's Codex Imperialis. And this was all the rules for your your Blood Angels and your, your other Space Marines and your different army units. Again, the game is still a little closer to a roleplay game than it is to a tabletop game. And these books are quite thick for what they are. But we've got our Mark VII armor has, is, is showing up and you know we've got the aesthetic that will go on forever. Uh, the war gear, same as the battle manual. Oh has the same cover but you just get to see a bit more of it we also then get what i consider one of the best codexes games workshop has ever done 
Codex Ultramarines was a treasure trove of information on Space Marines at the time. It had colour images of dozens of chapters. Chapters that we take for granted nowadays had never been heard of before. And this wonderful artwork. You know, just... You can't see it too well. Which I might be able to move the video. There we go. Just this, like, really wonderful pose. The sort of... Just the bulk of the Space Marines there. And you get the really cool fiery decals on the uh, on the rocket launchers. Terminators are making an appearance. You got in the background we have Warlord oh, sorry, Warhound Titans just blasting away into this. And this fantastic model. This wonderful standard bearer. Who is just I mean he's so cool with this like real Roman feel with his olive uh, leaves, like his laurel laurels and he's got his like imperial standard it just it's so it's peak as the kids would say it is peak kino at the same time we got codex angels of death which is the same thing but for the blood angels and the dark angels codex with more just phenomenal artwork you can keep looking at this and just keep seeing new things every single time we have the Death Watch showing up. We talked about this in a, a recent video, how great this artwork is. You've got Dreadnoughts with their multi-melters blasting away into things. Predators. And again, second edition, we had plastic Predators. You know, the Dreadnought weighed enough that if you put it in a sock, you could kill someone with it. Just perfect. Space Wolves. Again, loads of detail, loads of information... The best part of these codexes is they were about a centimetre, almost like half an inch thick. They were packed full of stuff. All hand painted. And they showed off just such amazing detail. I've never even noticed these space marines in the middle, just below his legs. I've always been just focusing on the Terminators. I never even noticed these guys were down here. And then what are they fighting under? Some sort of, you know... I mean, I can see this. This is some great big titanic structure. And I can hear the lightning crackling near it because of just the sheer size of it. It's so 80s, it hurts. And it gives you that evocative feel of who these people are. These are the space wolves. You know, they're, they're, they're feral. They're angry. They've got knives and bits of fur everywhere and teeth. They're very metal. And then we move into 3rd edition. Now, one of the first problems that 3rd edition had was these books were about half the thickness. Now, sure, that was because there was a lot less rules in them, but it did feel a bit weird that you were paying the same amount of money for a what almost felt like a magazine, and a not a thick magazine at that. But we had some wonderful artwork. The Crimson Fists became the poster boys for the Codex, and everything becomes a bit more gritty, a bit more realistic, a bit dull. Well, not dull, but not as cartoony. Everything felt a bit more grim and gritty and, and grounded. And this was a, a modern retaking of a classic piece of artwork. We all knew the, the last stand of the Crimson Fists with the, the beaky marine holding the, the severed orc head in his power fist as the missiles raced towards them. And we knew that no matter how hard they fought, they were going to die. But just like the Ultramarines one, this book gave us loads of really interesting new chapters. I think the Black Templars got mentioned here. I, it was either here first or it was in the Ultramarines book. But Black Templars come along. We get loads of it. We also get the introduction of the new Plastic Space Marines as well. Um, what a time to be alive. The Blood Angels, they got a supplement codex as well. Even thinner. A little bit disappointing. But a lovely codex with some really fantastic art that does not get seen enough nowadays. Just really t <clears throat> sort of cranked up that that vampire aesthetic, sort of that haughty look. Um, gave us a few more color schemes. Gave us some really interesting pictures of like the Death Watch, not Death Watch. Um, yeah, Death, what? Death Company. Sorry. 
okay, the uh, you know the anatomy's a bit wonky on the Terminator. It was a hand painted piece. What do you expect? At the same time, we got Codex Dark Angels with another fantastic shot. This new Codex had just the gothic feeling of 40k. We knew who the Dark Angels were just from this one image. It lets us know that you know everything about them. They are warrior monks. That they are highly religious. That they're secretive. Everything's in shadows. You can't see any of the statues' faces. But we also know that they are brutally efficient at their you know their their job as in combat. They're clearing left and right. They're firing everywhere. They've got these wonderfully on ornate weapons as well. The plasma pistol's got all this gilding on it. Just lovely. Oh. A brilliant classic Space Wolf piece. This young blood claw fighting against the orcs, holding this ice bridge all on his own. And we know that these guys are rugged individuals. That, you know, they, they, they live on the ice, they fight there, that they're tough, they're brutal in close combat. Um, and, you know, they, they, they're, they're, this, they're real sort of. They're real sort of warriors. You know, they're, 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 there's no hoity toitiness about them. We don't get to see any. You know, they don't have laurels in their hair, they're not carrying banners. He's got a two headed axe that's soaked in blood. You know, he's firing his weapon. He's blasted the head off an orc that's falling. Another orc's desperately clawing its way up. You know that, you know, these guys are tough. And again, it was a supplement, so it was a little thinner. Um, but this model definitely inspired a lot of modelers as well. We got two Chaos Space Marine Codex at this time. And this one, I had both. I didn't like the cover of this one because I, I didn't quite like this style of art. Um, it's uh, Mark Gibbons, I believe, does this. And his stuff was just a little bit surreal. It's just a little too stylized. A lot of his black and white stuff's really, really weird. Like long, drawn out faces and big, spiky teeth. And I don't know, I just. There were so many different styles of art at the time that these books were filled with that there wasn't a consistent tone. Um, but it worked. And it was cool, you know. It was, a, it was a weird rusty red codex and no one else had one. Then we got Codex Chaos Space Marines, which is quite possibly the greatest Space Marine Codex or Codex of all time. This Codex was perfection in every way, shape or form. We know what these guys are. They're not the nice, bright, you know, Space Marines we've seen. They're not the, the shadowy, gothic looking blood angels of oh sorry not blood, dark angels. You know, they're not the bright red you know superior looking blood angels. No no. These guys are old, beaten pitted, spiked, repaired, they're wearing the faces of their enemies pulled across their armour, they've got ammunition draped over them, they've got the skulls of their victims, their armour is ancient looking. Everything about them says this man has been fighting for a long time. He is a horrible, brutal raider. And it was perfect. Absolutely perfect. We also got this fantastic supplement codex, Eye of Terror, with just some fantastically detailed artwork of the Despoiler and the 13th Black Crusade. It was lovely. Actually, it might mean the 12th Black Crusade. I can't quite remember. I think it was the 12th. But yeah, really, really fantastic. Um, just cranking that detail up. Then we move into 4th edition, and this is where I was playing, and this is actually where I started playing um, pre-heresy. We were all starting to make pre-heresy armies, and I had a, an Emperor's Children army. It was also the same sort of time that the rules for 40k and 40 minutes, which became known as Combat Patrol, um, came out. And this was a fantastic Marine Codex. This had things in it where... Um, you could build your own chapter with 
with like advantages and disadvantages. And you could basically choose: Do you want your Space Marine chapter to be like normal, um, divergent, like heavily divergent, really a, a, adhere to the codex, that sort of thing? And each option gave you you could take uh, traits from you had, you had like positives and negatives like advantages and disadvantages so if you went one it's like oh yeah you get two advantages but you got to take two disadvantages and it could be things like oh i can take uh you know all my assault marines get furious charge but the disadvantage i end up taking is i can't take tanks or i can only have like a naught to one heavy support choice that sort of thing so it really let you build some flavor into your armies and it gave you just loads of different ways of trying out Space Marines. You know, just really tailoring them to your way of thinking, your way of playing. Plus we had this fantastic artwork, Manius Kalgar. This era also was the beginning of GW starting to like do digital sculpting. And a lot of the artwork just... The... I mean, this is a this is a wonderful Karl Kopinski piece. Um, a lot of Karl Kopinski's artwork left the models in its dust. Um, this book is filled with his artwork. Some wonderful, like Raven Guard stuff. Um, and you just look at this artwork, and it's just like, wow, this is so cool. And then you look at the models, and you were like, oh, is that it? And that was a bit of a problem. We also got the Black Templars co um, Codex, and Again, I'm sorry some of these are so small, but this is just... It, it, it captures everything the Black Templars were supposed to be. They went from being just a a regular kind of Space Marine chapter. Because they were just a, a regular-ish chapter at this point. Um, they'd been in the 3rd edition starter set. They were just black and white Space Marines. And then suddenly, they got cranked up to 11... And this was the time as well that the, the Bretonians in fantasy had just had a relatively big refresh, which meant the world was awash with knightly bits that you could convert your space marines with. And people went mad. Some of the conversions. Lovely codex. They came out with some fantastic models and they got their own fantastic upgrade kit as well. Really helped the Heresy guys because it was the first time we got a plastic Mark IV uh, head available to us, and <clears throat> it's never gone back since. Dark Angels got their next codex, and it's kind of evocative of the same sort of style. We have a chaplain with a plasma pistol in the front, the Marines are all around him, but they're kind of pushing up that kind of knightly monk aesthetic but it's all a bit lost it, it doesn't quite have the punch that the artwork did in the previous edition and it's just a little kind of dull it almost blends into the background itself chaos space marines got an update um harping back to those sort of Rogue Trader and 2nd Edition style images where everyone's bathed in flames. And while they're spiky, everything looks a little too clean. And there isn't this feel that these guys have the sort of the level of experience that the 3rd Edition Codex did. There is just a, there's a, there's a subtle tone shift slightly. And it becomes more, oh, they're all warped and twisted. Not that they're ancient, bitter warriors. Then we get into 5th edition. And 5th edition's codexes, well, they're not great. They're not, oh, sorry, not 5th edition, 6th edition. They're not great. They're not bad. And things get just a bit... This might be 5th edition. I'm getting a bit confused, sorry. Um, yeah, this is 5th edition. It's kind of bland. Because it's just a Space Marine shooting a guy. Yeah, it tells me Space Marines are kind of cool. You know, they're guys in armour that shoot other guys in armour. But the forefront is this Marine dying. And he 
kind of looks cooler than this guy. He's got horns, a sword. If he had been more central, this guy had just been out of the way, got rid of, and he's just firing his gun, and he's got guys on either side of him, it would have been closer. But the detail isn't make out... You can't really make out that much detail. There isn't really a, a decent focal point in this. And it just wasn't as good, in my opinion. We've got another Space Wolves supplement. Um, I really like this piece of art, and I don't think it gets enough publication. But again, it just feels a little small, and it's not just because of the um, the picture. I just think he should have been closer. Blood Angel's got another supplement. And it's not a bad piece of art. And I think this is a solid one. I just think the artistic style of the Marines, some of the... Um, the anatomy is a bit, like, really a bit off on this one. Some of the heads are a bit weird, a bit shaped, like, weirdly sized. But it's a solid codex. It was a solid cover for a codex. You kind of knew what you were getting, this angelic host of lots of jump packs with axes and dreadnoughts and, you know, space marines. Grey Knights come along with their first standalone codex. Before this, they were just a part of the Demon Hunters codex. And, I mean, it explains who they are. You know, you've got gribbly monsters fighting guys in armour. I just don't think this is a great piece of artwork. I don't know. I, I'm not sure how I would make this one better. Maybe some of this foreground detailing should be uh, changed around a bit. And I think that the, the, like his pose and his helmet just look a bit weird. Like, this guy's great. This guy's great. Maybe put him down there, swap that guy, and put this guy in the middle. That's maybe what I would have done. And then we move on to 6th edition. And I hated the 6th edition codex covers. I didn't like this borderless look to them. The artwork was not particularly great, in my opinion. Um, yeah, okay, it's a space marine. But I'm... If I'm a kid and I first come into this hobby, I'm not really sure what I'm seeing here. I'm just seeing some armoured guy with a big smoking gun and a what looks like a wildly, you know, badly proportioned fist. So I think this one's bad because it doesn't really convey enough information on who these guys are. And again, we got back to Ultramarines as well. The Chaos Space Marines, it's an interesting piece of art, but I've never been a fan of it. Again, we've got no border, nothing. It's just the blank artwork, which some people may like. Personally, I don't. And we're done, We're moving again with another aesthetics change for the Chaos Space Marines. We've moved back or more towards a twisted, kind of mutated look to them. This is, is probably one of the last times they have a kind of renegade-y, old, ancient warrior look. But they're definitely starting to show the you know, warped by chaos look to everything. And unfortunately also, the problem for this is, this is when we start to just start seeing codexes reuse a lot of the artwork. Dark Angels, it's not bad. Um, it's just a bad angle for a picture. It, it's, it doesn't quite show enough it does it shows a lot but it doesn't quite show enough of the character if he'd been tilted 45 degrees the other like to this side and he was shooting that way it probably would have been better but looking at his back it just it's not a great picture it it doesn't really kind of the whole idea of the codex cover is to build hype for someone for why they want to collect this army and i'm like okay it's a space marine a space marine with some skulls and like some spikes in his back black legion i, I put this one, i wasn't going to put this one here but i thought i would again it really shows that sort of twisted warped by the powers of the warp look that's coming in for the uh for the chaos space marines um and again the supplements they all they, they again went for a different art style they went for this bordered thing if they'd all had this border it would have been fine space wolves 
a weaker piece of art, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's fine because it shows who they are. It's some details here. But maybe we're zoomed in too much. Maybe there's just, like... Nothing really makes us stand out over Codex Space Marines. Like, who are these guys? Why are they there? Grey Knights, not bad. Not bad, you know. But the same sort of complaints apply. I don't know who this guy is, really. I just see it's a guy in some armour. Why would I collect this guy over the other guy in armour? You know, I need, I need something. I need him crushing a blood letter or something under his feet. Or running through a Keeper of, keeper of Secrets. Blood Angels, not a bad piece of artwork. Okay, it's it, it's okay, but <sighs> this bit here is really weird. Like where they've they've just photoshopped out the uh, the the, um, the the banner banner the the border area, so that you can still see the vial, but it's just done in a way that's. Like, we know that they can have it so it's in front of the, the, the thing. Because they've done it with the sword, the plasma pistol, I think. Why have they just deleted this here? It looks sloppy. Um, and again, all the same complaints. Doesn't really show much about them other than that they're, you know, a space marine. This one, not so bad. I quite like this one. Um... It's a little busy. There's a lot going on on page, but it's a good model. It's oh, it's a good image. It shows us that this guy is, you know, he's a slightly different space marine. He's got his robes on. We know he's kind of more of a like a monk and a knight kind of look to him. I'm not a fan of them when they've just got one person on them. I think codexes need to show you that they're a unified force. But it's a good piece of artwork. I, I will give it that. And then we got into 7th edition. And... Oh, I, I've got nothing. There's all the same complaints as before. We've got a guy wearing this sort of Mark V armour. It's a mismatch of everything. Uh, Mark Eight torso by the look of it. Mark Six legs. Mark Seven or a Mark Eight helmet. Um, okay, I know what a Space Marine is. But... Who's he fighting? Why is he fighting? Where is he fighting? What do his friends look like? Is this the only one I get? Death Watch finally get their own codex. Before they... I believe they were only a, a, a White Dwarf army before this. And... I, I just feel that this is, this is sort of disingenuous of who Death Watch is supposed to be in the fluff. Um, it's a Space Marine with a weird power sword running through fire when I think it would have just been better if we'd seen the codex cover being more like those sort of second and third edition with a group of them and maybe it's showing them being a bit more stealthy you know they they you know, sneaking through an alien spaceship and that sort of thing um, but Death Watch yeah it's just a bit a bit bland it's all just bland space marines um, White Scars finally get their own supplement. Um, I've never thought the Mark Seven helmet looks particularly White Scarsy. It's always struck me as not being particularly along the lines of the aesthetics of their Legion. And then this guy is carrying a straight bladed sword as well, which is also kind of weird for White Scars. But White Scars hadn't had really many models at all before this point. Uh, if any, actually. Uh, I think they'd had three bikes. And that was it. It's okay, but uh, these codexes all suffer from the same problem. There's no soul to them beyond just a single space marine on the cover. Flesh Terrors also get theirs. I quite like this because it's a good picture of Seth. Um, you know, he's wearing his Mark III armour. He's got his massive two-handed chainsaw. But, okay, they're called Flesh Terrors. Um, 
I, I might be able to guess that they're a Blood Angel successor. If I don't know anything about them, um, do I know that the Flesh Terrors are supposed to be far more aggressive than any other Space Marine? That this guy is an absolute blender of a Space Marine? Not particularly. And then we get to 8th edition. Yeah, I'm not touching that. No. Um... It's okay. It's a single space marine. We have some more stuff. You know, we've got more space marines in the background. We're seeing some different units about, you know, jump pack units with heavy weapons. It's the introduction of Primaris Marines. So they kind of want to just give us a nice big static um, introduction to Mark X Tacticus Armor. And it's it's okay. It's a new style of Codex again. We've got a new different style of um, border. Kind of reminiscent of 3rd and 4th edition. But very quickly it changes. We get a second one in 8th edition. And I don't know who this artist is for this. I've, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I'm not sure what it is about them. I like Grimdark Art, but I just don't... It doesn't click with me. The one that really gets me is the Gene Sealer Colts Codex of this edition. It's just horrible. But we start to see these kind of codexes getting better. And these guys are... You know, they're showing us this guy stood in the middle. He's not seeking cover. He's not hiding. Rounds are pinging off of him. There's bullets flying everywhere. They're not invincible because we see a guy's going down. The guy at the front, you can see he's gritting his teeth. He's angry. You know that he means business. The way that they angled the heads on the bottom, he looks like he's squinting, like glaring at someone. And then we've got the sort of the banners and some of the sort of reliquies and stuff. We know these guys are big tough, angry, you know, they're not Master Chief, they're not Spartans, they're something different, and I think this is a really solid codex. But we get reused codex art for the Chaos Space Marines. We get reused codex art for the Grey Knights. We get reused codex art for the Blood Angels. We get reused codex art for the Dark Angels. We got a Thousand Suns Codex. Spoiler alert, they're going to get some reused Codex art coming up soon as well. Um, this is kind of cool because, you know, we haven't had a Thousand Suns Codex before. They were locked away in Codex Chaos Space Marines. And obviously we had Magnus come out at this time as well. Um, it might have been just at the end of, or just before this edition started. But yeah, Magnus came, came back and suddenly we had, you know, these guys as a major fa uh, faction. And yeah, we can see that they're Space Marines, but it's clear that this guy's not quite your traditional Space Marine, that he's not your traditional Chaos Space Marine, so that's not a bad one. Reused artwork for Death Watch works better, because it's not being hidden by the giant logo. Um, the colour correction's slightly better. It's okay. Reused for the Space Wolves. Again, slightly better because it's resized and not covered by text as much. Uh, then on to 9th edition, where we have another Codex Space Marines. Um, a lot of the same things I'd say about the last one. We're starting to see Tacticus armor becoming more like traditional Space Marine armor. They're getting a lot more of that sort of 5th edition Karl Kapinski depth to them with the skulls and lots of, lots of uh, parchment. And we get a wonderful looking Terminator Chaplin back there, who didn't get a model that was anything like that. Um, lots of banners that are all ragged and shot to pieces. And, you know, the weapons look thinner, they look finer. The scale's a bit better. Um, the models obviously don't reflect this particularly as well, but it's a solid codex. We get some new art for the Grey Knight, and I think this is better. You know, it's 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 got this great big... We know that he's he's covered in purity seal, so we know that he's warded against, you know, evil. We've got them standing there with two-handed weapons. Their bolters are strapped to their arms. You know, it, it, it's showing bits of demons everywhere. The sky's a bit weird. But these guys look mean. They look mean, keen, and business-like. And I think this is a probably the best codex art they've had. Chaos Space Marines gets another one. Um, new artwork. And 
I'm not a fan. It's dark. It's hard to see kind of what's going on. It all just looks like a bit of a, a, a nightmare, which I suppose is what they're supposed to be. But it's very difficult to define details. It's almost like one of those AI-generated pictures where if you glance at it, you can kind of see what it is. But the more you look, the less you can actually see it. Um, just not great, and it gets used again. The World Eaters one's better. Um, you know, we can tell what these guys are. We can tell they're muscle bound, blood murder maniacs. There's skulls everywhere. There's fire raining from the sky. They've got barbs on everything. So we know that these guys are just about causing pain and suffering and bloodletting. This guy's got his, like, Angron style face. Um, giant axes on everything. You know, there's Space Marines who are just turn up to 11. Codex Space Marines 10th edition, however, it goes back to the artwork from the 2nd, 8th edition Codex, but it zooms in. And I think by zooming in, it loses some of its appeal. Um, just having this guy on his own doesn't quite feel as good as... Uh, is it this one? Yeah. It just doesn't have that same depth. It doesn't have that feeling that this guy is one of many and that he's in the middle of something. Um, actually, there we go. So again, here we go. We're on to Codex Space Marines and it's the reused artwork. They've obviously upped the brightness now and the, the background's different. You can see a bit better. It's a bit of an improvement but it's still just kind of an amalgamation of weird gribbliness that doesn't quite get across who the faction is. Um, the upcoming Blood Angels Codex, um, or this might be, no, this is the existing Codex um, that's about to be replaced. I'm not entirely sure if this is the actual. No, I think this is the upcoming one, sorry. Um, I like the colour palette. I don't like the faction icons being behind them like this. It just looks like... It's like one of those, you know, graphic design is my passion memes. Um, I like Mephiston being, like, ominously looming in the background there. And if it had been more like a, a second edition one, if he'd been up at the top, sort of lit by lightning, you know, as that sort of vampire lord and all of these thralls around him, I think it could have been a bit better. But like, why has this guy got a yellow helmet and this guy hasn't? There isn't any sort of clear distinction. Um, the scale's off all over the place as well. Look how thin the barrel is on this. The barrel's not even in line with the ejection ball. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's a, it's a little bit weak. I'm sure it looks better if we could see more of this artwork, if there is more of this artwork. Um, I like the Dark Angels one. The addition of like what appears to be a Plague Marine, maybe? It's a little hard to see. Or just a, a Chaos Space Marine. Um, takes the focus away a little bit. I mean, maybe if this had been just a, a dead Marine of his own chapter and they were honouring him. Um... I like that you've got the, the guy following him, you know, he's clearly still aware, he's still clearly dangerous. This guy, you know, with his flaming braziers on his back, his sword, it's got a good balance to it. Um, you know, the eye is drawn straight to him. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. If I had to go back and pick a single image to be the chaos or the to be the space marine codex going forward um it would probably be something like this one or possibly this one i'm leaning more towards this one actually um we need carl kopinski back he needs to stop riding his bicycle and getting into car crashes um let me know which one was your favourite.
did you have a a particular one that you felt was your codex? Was it the first one you ever came into? Um, do you think that that clouds your judgment? Um, I haven't. I don't think really judged these based on their rules. It's more simply about the aesthetic of the covers. Um, let me know which one of yours, you know, is your favourite, guys. It's good to have a discussion. Okay, thanks for watching. My name's Bando. This is Brexit Bando. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.